Please join with me for a moment of prayer. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, and indeed the actions of our lives always be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Okay, so it goes by many different names. It is coincidence to some, or serendipity to others. You might even call it luck. Um, if you are a religious type, you might call it providence. A philosopher would call it fate. Um, in the East, they call it karma. But personally, my favorite word is kismet. But whatever you call it, it is real, y'all. Because when Dina, June, and I prepared for this sermon series, Real Human Rights, on the spiritual and human rights themes from the Academy Award-nominated Best Picture Films, we had no idea that things would come together so well as they have for the last six weeks. I mean, the first week, it was pretty tough for me personally. Um, I was to preach on the movie The Father, um, and it hit really close to home. And so that Monday, I got in my car and packed it up and got my dog, and we went to my family cottage on Manitoulin Island. Uh, and there, uh, I reflected on my dad's own dance with dementia and his death almost a year ago, and, and, and reflected in what is his favorite place in the world. And then, my beloved dog Chaz, at a ripe old age, crossed the Rainbow Bridge, um, it was his time, and it was a hard week, but I tell you, preaching on aging and on the movie The Father really did help me get through that tough week. Uh, it was as if it was God sent. And then the second week, Reverend June, on Mother's Day, preached on the moving Promising Young Woman and talked about misogyny and sexism uh, and, and the rights of women, right? 50% of our population that still don't have equal rights in our world. And everything came together so perfectly. And then on the third week, I preached on the movie Nomadland and talked about homelessness and housing. And that weekend, the newspapers were filled with stories about Toronto's housing crisis. And it was as if, if I was meant to preach on homelessness and housing on that particular Sunday. Uh, and then the fourth Sunday was the Feast of the Pentecost and recognizing that it was also um, Asian Heritage Month. We talked about the movie Minari, which is about a South Korean family. And then we came to the time of the Jesus Prayer and a bunch of congregants in different languages. Uh, said the, the Jesus prayer, and, and everything just really came together so beautifully on Pentecost Sunday as we talked about diversity and languages, which is what Pentecost and um, Asian Heritage Month are all about. And then last week, on the fifth Sunday of the sermon series, Reverend Dina Dudley preached on the movie Judas and the Black Messiah, um, and I think unconsciously uh, we picked that Sunday, and it happened to be exactly one year since the murder of George Floyd in the United States and, and a rising consciousness about the Black Lives Matter movement. And now, here we are in the sixth and final week of the sermon series, and I am to preach on the movie The Sound of Metal, which is a, a film about a heavy metal drummer who loses his sense of hearing. Uh, and it's a very powerful film. I do have to confess, I haven't seen it, but but I've I, I've researched it a great deal. And and to kick off Pride Month, I really, really, really wanted to preach about ability and disability in our LGBTQ2 plus community and the importance of uh, uh, intersectionality and accessibility. And and little did I know when we started planning the sermon series months ago, and even on Monday when I started writing the sermon, that this week, right now, is actually National Accessibility Week. Like, what a coincidence is that? Or, or, or was it luck, or, or serendipity, or perhaps something heaven-sent? And so this week on Wednesday, when we had our clergy team meeting, uh, our worship planning meeting, as we do every Wednesday, um, we started brainstorming about the music for today's service. And, and, you know, Jason and the choir do an awesome song every week as an anthem, but we're giving them this week off so they can prepare for our Church on Church online service a little later this month. And we're reprising um, Rainbow Connection. And then we always do an, a, a, an offertory song, and it's usually a guest soloist. And once again, we are reprising Give Me Somebody to Love, which goes perfectly with our theme, because whether you, um, wherever you are on the ability and disability spectrum, we all want the same thing, right? We all just want somebody to love. But, but when it came to our clergy team meeting, we needed to pick a hymn because I hope you've noticed that we've been playing a, a hymn every week and then putting the lyrics on the bottom so you folks can sing along. 
And so uh, Dina June and I started talking about what hymn would go uh, with uh, our theme of ability and disability in the movie Sound of Metal. And I wasn't about to play a heavy metal song uh, to go with the Sound of Metal, but um, the first song that came in my mind was from another Academy Award nominated film, um, the song This Is uh, This Is Me, which was nominated in 2018 as Best Original Song, uh, and it is from the movie The Greatest Showman. Uh, but we've never sang that at MCC Toronto, so we don't have a recording of that. But there is a hymn that, that has similar themes and is just like it, and it just so happens to be one of my favorite hymns that I requested be sung at my ordination 10 years ago. And that is the hymn, Here I Am, Lord. Gosh, I love that hymn. And here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? Great, great hymn. And so I said uh, to, to June and Dina, oh, well, that would be the perfect hymn, but let's just make sure there's no problematic lyrics in this one. Uh, and so Dina started singing it, Here I am, Lord, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. No, I, I think it's pretty good. And I said, oh, good, thank goodness, because we don't need no ableist language on the Sunday we're talking about ability and disability, like in Amazing Grace, you know, I once was blind and now I see. We don't want any of that this Sunday. Um, and all was fine and good. It was going to be another terrific Sunday uh, where everything was going to come together and make a beautiful theme. This last six weeks has just been, I think, too amazing to be coincidental. But who am I to claim that uh, perhaps God had something to do with it? Anyways, all was fine and good until I got ready to record my sermon and send everything in and got the lyrics for Here I Am, Lord, and noticed the third verse. Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? I've heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. Oh, cringe. This song, this hymn that I love so much, has awful ableist language referring to people as lame. I have sung it hundreds of times and never noticed it before. So should I switch the hymn at the last minute or should we sing it as we did at the beginning of today's service intentionally so we can talk about it? Because friends, we need to talk about it, about how easily and often unintentionally we slip into ableist language. It is everywhere around us including in our scripture passage today from the Gospel of John. You see, in John chapter 9, Jesus is walking along with his disciples, and they place a blind man who they assume has been blind from birth. And one of the disciples asks a cringe-worthy question of Jesus. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answers, neither. Neither this man nor his parents uh, sinned. That's not why people have bad things happen to them. That's not why children are born with disabilities. It has nothing to do with sin. But then Jesus continues and says something else just as cringeworthy. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. And then Jesus goes on to heal him by spitting in the ground and making some mud and then putting on the man's eyes and telling him to go and bathe in the pool of Siloam. And then, uh, by miracle, this man who was blind by birth can see. But no one believes it was him. And so the Pharisees order this great big trial because Jesus is healed on the Sabbath. And they call witnesses, including the blind man's parents and the blind man himself. And eventually the, blind, the formerly blind man is cast out. And then Jesus goes and finds him again and offers this beautiful re reflection on spiritual blindness. Now, let me just make this clear. People don't have disabilities because of sin. And people don't have disabilities just so Jesus can go ahead and cure them or anyone else for that matter. People with disabilities aren't lame. They don't need nor want our pity. Uh, people with disabilities don't want to inspire us. They just want to live their darn lives and experience the same love and belonging we all do, as you will hear Kelly uh, Holliff sing about uh, a little bit later with uh, Give Me Somebody to Love. Folks with disabilities just want to have barriers taken away to their full participation and have full accessibility. In fact, think about that word, accessibility. It's literally the ability to have access. 
And that's it, the right, the human right to have access. And so in preparing for the sermon, I wrote a little summary for our newsletter, The Query, uh, and I, I, I ran it by a friend first, and I wrote this. No one is born with a disability. Rather, it is the systems and the structures that transform our differing abilities into disabilities. We aren't disabled until a building doesn't provide equal access. We aren't disabled until an event fails to provide for a sign language interpreter. But my friend who I ran it by put it this way. He, he wrote back, many believe that a disability comes with limitations, but limitations aren't from the disability, but from the systems and structures that have normalized and prioritized one type of body over others. So check out this famous cartoon. I've seen it many times. It is perfect for our Canadian context. Could you shovel uh, the ramp? Someone in a wheelchair says. Well, all the other kids are waiting to use the stairs. When I get through shoveling them off, I'll clear the ramp for you. To which the response is, but if you shovel the ramp, we can all get in. As I was researching for the sermon, uh, I read one disability advocate who said, everyone will experience a disability at some point in time in their life. Everyone, whether it's a broken leg or a medical issue, or as we started the sermon series with, the very real experience of aging. So access isn't just for people with disabilities, it's for all of us, just like the ramp. Community has got to be for everyone if it's going to be community. As one of the songs we sing at the 7 p.m. Uh, service says, none of us are free until all of us are free. And if you want to learn more about this subject matter, let me recommend another Academy Award nominated film, this time in the category of Best Documentary, and that film is called Crip Camp. And it's about a, a summer camp, Camp Jened, for youth with disabilities that uh, existed in the 1970s. And in 1971 specifically, it brought together a group of people who formed a cohort that would become the biggest advocates for persons with disabilities, um, especially in the United States, but really in the world. And, and that film, uh, Camp Crip, tells the real life story of Judith Hooman, who has done TED Talks and been on The Daily Show and talking in the US Congress many times, um, been interviewed by Trevor Noah, and she stars in this documentary. And unlike The Sound of Metal, uh, which I haven't seen because it's not accessible, um, Crip Camp is easy to access on Netflix. And it is a great movie, so check it out if you get a chance, uh, Crip Camp. But you know, in the Gospel of John chapter 9, uh, with this story about the blind man that, yes, has some ableist and problematic language, nonetheless, it seeks to remind us that Jesus came to bring access. Came to bring access to the dominion of God for all people of all abilities. And Jesus calls us to do the same create access for all peoples. And so my friends, shall we?